Hello, my name is Linda Colley. And in fact, I'm working on something that I didn't anticipate doing in this wonderful place, Vico. I became interested in looking again at Edward Gibbon, the author of The Great Decline and Fall of the Roman Empire. Now, at one level, he's been done to death. Um, but most scholars have looked understandably at his contribution to ancient history or to Gibbon as a stylist or as a literary figure. I'm less interested in Gibbon himself in some ways than in his global audience, which gets bigger all the time. Gibbon is one of the most translated authors. He's always been in print in English, of course, but over the long 19th century, he spreads into all European languages, as far as I can see, as well as non-European languages. You can read him in Hindi and Urdu if you want by the late 19th century. So I want to get this global audience thing in. I also want to say, well, what's the appeal? It's not just Gibbon's scholarship or his very dramatic subject and his imaginative rendering of it. I think the point is that Gibbon is essentially ambivalent um, in all sorts of ways. Uh, he was not just a writer at different times. He was a soldier and a politician, and that comes out in his work. He's also someone who is politically conservative with a small c, but he's very subversive. And that means, in practice, that he can be used and enjoyed and exploited, if you like, by all sorts of people and lobbies who use him as a great source book. So at one level, Gibbon becomes a favourite historian of certain British imperialists. But on the other hand, say, both Gandhi and Nehru read Gibbon in prison uh, when they are sent there by the British imperial authorities for wanting an independent India, because their interpretation of Gibbon is that he chronicled the decline of the West. And they want to pillage his great book for ideas and approaches about that. Um, you also get extraordinary uses of Gibbon by reformers, and by novelists, um, for example, shortly after Gibbon is translated into Russian in the 1880s, you get a whole group of very radical Russian poets reading Gibbon in Russian and using his references because they want to tell tales of decadence uh, and also because Many of them are opposed to the Tsarist empire. So that's what I'm trying to do, to go to a topic which superficially seems very familiar. Uh, there are, as I'm finding out, hundreds and thousands of things written on Gibbon. But the global Gibbon uh, and if you like, the ambivalent Gibbon and the way that Gibbon is used has been much less looked at. Um, and that's what I'm doing.